This is the Pro Agility Drill. One of the best drills there are for quickness, uh, to work on your quickness. Um, that way you're ready out here to be explosive. Okay, everything in the game of baseball is explosive from zero to 100% as quick as I possibly can. So use this drill and help that out, all right? How this drill works is we're starting at the middle cone, all right? When you say go, we're gonna go right, sprint five yards that way, touch the cone, sprint all the way through to the far cone, 10 yards, touch, then sprint another five yards right through the middle. Okay, it's called the 5-10-5 drill a lot of times if you ever hear that, but it is one of the most used uh, quickness drills that I've seen out there. Okay, like I said, I started by running right in this first drill, first example. Uh, we can go right, say 10 times when I start, then we can go left when we start. Okay, the reason why I want to go right more times than left though is because when I'm stealing bases out here on the baseball field, I'm in my stance and I'm running to my right. All right, so I would recommend going twice as many times to your right as when you start by going to your left, okay? With two people, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can have one person facing the other person on each side of the cone. You tell them we're gonna go right, run to your right, and they'll take off, racing to the middle cone again. Five, 10, five. The winner getting crossed the middle cone first, or you can have them face each other. You'll tell one person to move first, and the other person has to mirror them. So if they run that way to start, this person has to try to catch and beat them to the center cone, which is very, very hard, but it'll challenge your athletes, all right? So use this drill, five yards, 10 yards, finish through the cone for five yards, all right? Just as so, I'm not gonna go hard, but I will show you exactly how it's done. Five yards, touch, run through 10 yards, touch, explode through the center, this is your finish line. Use this drill and improve that quickness. This is the top end speed drill, okay? This drill is designed for making that turnaround second base and exploding the third base for that triple instead of being out, we're safe. Or if we're running the 60 yard dash, when the wall hits you at yard 50, we can push through that last 10 yards and be as quick there as we were for our first 10 yards, okay? How this drill works is we start at the first cone. We have another cone halfway between the first and the third cone, okay? If you're running the 60 or if you're an older guy, I would advise you to go about 80 yards total. So the first cone's here, 40 yards is, is the middle cone. The far cone is 80 yards, all right? If you're a youngster, maybe we shorten it down to a 40 yard distance, 20 yards is the middle point. All right, and we set our cones that way. Um, as you get faster and, and more endurance, you can push these cones out further and further, all right? Now, we run from the first cone to the second cone and we're going 50%, really working on form. Um, eye socket to hip pocket with our arms, not crossing over each other and getting the knees up and out. All right, working on form, going 50%. As soon as you hit the middle cone, you turn it up to 100%, okay? Working on that top end speed, that last 10 yards of the 60 yard dash or turning around second base, that way we can be as quick as we were going out of the box as we are going into third base. This is the rounding drill, okay? Coming down first base, we have our three cones here. One is about 10 feet from first base, all right, off the baseline, just on the cut of the grass, if you have that on your field here. The second cone is on the very middle of the base, and the third cone is about five feet off of first base, a tiny bit deeper than the baseline. I would go about, uh, about three feet deeper than the baseline. We have our three cones here. Now, the point of this is to get our turns to be the most efficient they can possibly be, all right? Now, a lot of it is momentum. What I see at a young age is kids running directly down the baseline, then doing the question mark. Okay, as soon as you come down the, straight down the base path and bend out for a question mark, our momentum is going away from the field. We never want that. That way, this way right here following the cones, we go right around this cone, on the outside of this cone. We come to the inside corner. Don't touch the cone hitting this inside corner, all right? And then keeping our body inside this third cone, okay? So it's gonna be an outside, inside on the corner, and inside that third cone. Okay, again, controlling momentum. That way we're not question marking momentum going away from the field and having to correct ourselves going back through here. All right, maybe the most important cone is this second cone here, keeping us from touching the middle of the base. We wanna be as efficient and as good as we can possibly be at hitting this inside corner of the base, whether it's with the left or the right, whichever times up with the base. What we don't want here is it chop my feet, that way I get my left or I get my right, whatever you want to do. Our stride lengths will determine which foot hits the base, okay? So like I said, outside the first cone, inside the second cone, 
inside the third cone and head on to second base. This drill is called the momentum drill. Used for all infielders except the first base and third, short and second, positions that require momentum as we catch it. This is a great drill for you. All right, cones are set up two cones directly in line to, to where the ball's coming from. Okay, whether you have a coach flipping or you're facing home plate, um, that's where we want the first two cones to be aligned with. The other cone is gonna be slightly offset to the right, assuming we're right-handed throwers, okay? Point of this drill is to create momentum. Youth ball players a lot of times will sit directly behind the ball. They don't give their eyes any angle on the hop, can't see the depth, and they get flat-footed, all right? Their drill is actually gonna eliminate two of those things, all right, and create better momentum and also better ability to read the hops, okay? So we're starting behind this first cone here. For this, for this drill right here, I have a ball sitting on the third cone. That's assuming I don't have someone to roll me a ball, okay? So I'll run it through both versions of this drill. The first time um, is having the ball on the third cone, all right? So you're in fielding position as if you just took your prep step. You're breaking to the right around this second cone and committing the left foot at time of catch, okay? So instead of attacking the ball from directly behind it, we're getting slightly out of the path of the ball, attacking on the right side of the ball and committing the left foot through the baseball, creating momentum and giving our eyes some depth perception on the hop, okay? That may even be the most important part of this drill, okay? So in full motion, it should look like this, a prep step, chopping through, okay? You can either have your ball player pick that ball up and throw it or pick the ball up and just hold it to center, whatever you wanna do with that, okay? Now, if you have someone to roll, we'll just eliminate this ball here, tighten these cones up slightly, and have our coach or parent roll the ball directly at this third cone here, okay? Our ball player is gonna catch the ball right in front of that. As soon as he sees you release the ball, he's breaking around the cone, committing the left foot, creating momentum through that ball, and making the play to first, okay? creating momentum and creating some depth perception for your eyes by getting slightly on the side of the baseball is the name of the game for this drill. This is the catching zone drill. All right, I'm gonna walk you through this. What we have is a ball and a cone to my left, a ball on a cone in front of me, and a ball on a cone to my right, all right? Starting with the one in the middle, you'll have your ball player take his prep step, attack this ball as if it was a ground ball, okay? So attacking slightly to the right, bending the left foot through it, okay? What it should look like in fast motion is a prep step, attack, time it, boom, okay? Working on center and separate, okay? I know that was pretty quick, but making sure we center the ball in each of these locations, all right? So that's how the one in front of me should look. The ball to my right, prep step, attack through it, left foot coming through the backhand, okay? It's best to do with bare hands here, that way you can actually grab the ball, but make sure right foot's tucking close to the path of the ball, and the left foot is coming through as I catch. Again, center and separate to make a throw. So, in fast motion, it should look like this. Prep step, attack, left foot through, boom. Center and separate. Okay, making sure we're in line to make the throw. Lastly, the ball to my left, okay? Prep step, catching this ball outside my stance as I commit my left foot. Left foot lands, catch, center, and separate, okay? Notice I turn front side on this one. Okay, what I mean by that is I don't spin. So, in fast motion, prep step, attack, left foot commits, center, separate. Okay? A variation to this drill is you can push this cone back, prep step, now I attack. Notice how catch point is behind my hip. When this happens, we are required to spin to get closed my quickest, okay? So practice both of these. Front side, which is just pulling closed, and back side, which is catch points behind my hip, spin, separate, and make a throw, all right? This is the catch zone drill. This is the mental clock drill. Now, what a mental clock is to me is knowing that based on the speed of the ball hit, the speed of the runner, what kind of catch and what kind of throw I have to give my first baseman to get the runner out by at least a step. Okay, it's no accident that big leaguers are getting runners out by a step or two, or if you watch minor leaguers especially, all plays over there are pretty, pretty close, okay? They're not making throws on the run when they don't have to. I'm giving you my most efficient catch and most efficient throw with my best balance I'm able to give you 
on each and every play, okay? So I've got three cones spaced out exactly like this. We have one at the back cut where my prep step lands. I have one halfway uh, between the cut of the grass and the lip back here, halfway there. And I have my last cone in the baseline, okay? Creating three zones from the first cone to the second cone, from the second cone to the third cone, from the third cone to home plate. All right, I'll explain why we do this. Notice I have three balls laid out, one in each zone. One here, one there, one in the furthest zone, okay? Taking your prep step, you're gonna have your ball player attack through. Now, the ball that's close to you, based on the speed of that ball for it to get all the way back here, and me only have this ability to gain this much ground here, this is a two-hand play. Two-hand play through the ball, center, shuffle, and throw. I have time to do that, based on, again, the speed of the runner, the speed of the ball, okay? Now, that's the first ball. If I get to the second zone, if I have time to gain this much ground from my prep step point all the way to this ball, I do not have time to break it down, two hand this ball, square it up, left foot through it, shuffle and throw. This guy will be safe. So in the second zone, I'm trying to train myself as, as I pass midway point of the clay, this is gonna be a one hand play, okay? Now, I didn't gain, gain too, too much ground, so I have the ability to one hand, assuming I broke as hard as I could, one hand, set my feet and make a throw, rather than throwing on the run. This is probably the zone I see done wrong the most as a youth player. I see kids throwing on the run when they don't have to, okay? Keep in mind, consistency and velocity are compromised big time when I throw on the run. I only throw on the run when I have to. So in that second zone, you're breaking as hard as you can, through it, center, make a strong, firm throw to first base, okay? Now, finally, the most fun for kids and the most challenging for kids is the third zone. As I pass the baseline when I catch the ball, I do not have time to set my feet and make a throw without the runner being safe. So I attack as hard as I can to this third ball. If I pass the baseline before I catch the ball, I have to know in my head that I need to get rid of this ball. So I'm coming through it throwing on the run, okay? That is my only play. So the most, impo most important thing of this drill is to realize based on where I am, what kind of catch and what kind of throw I have to give over there to first, whether it's a square it up, ball in front of my two, in, in between my two feet, shuffle throw, and attack with one hand, shuffle throw, or if I get further up there, past the baseline, attack with one hand, throwing on the run. Okay, again, trying to give ourselves the most consistent throw I can give and get the runner out by a step or two each and every time. Now we have two variations of the three cone drill as far as our stance and lower body go hitting. Okay, the first one, you're gonna measure out between your, your back foot, line up a cone, you're gonna measure out your stride. Okay, the stride is gonna be our third cone. Okay, the middle cone is gonna be the center of your body, the center of these two cones, okay? So there's our three cones, back foot, center, front foot, okay? In this drill, you'll take your normal stance, you'll stride to the far cone, and you'll drive the knee even with the second cone, the middle cone, okay? The whole goal of this drill is to keep your body centered at contact. A lot of youth baseball players, their head will go forward, their knee will kind of spin backwards, and you'll get this kind of line within your body. Ideally at contact, the knee, the hip, the shoulder, and the head are all in a line in between your base, in your center, okay? You can have your ball player either stay above the cone, or what I like to do is swing full swing, then I drop down to a knee to make sure that knee is getting to the center cone, all right? The second variation of this is creating consistency within your stance and your stride, okay? A lot of mishit balls are lack of consistency, that's it, okay? So we're starting with our first two cones, back foot and our front foot in our stance, okay? Our third cone is where our stride lands. Yes, we wanna gain some ground forward, momentum towards the pitcher, um, but we do not wanna lunge, okay? Make sure we're still in an athletic position that where our back leg can still drive. A lot of times we'll start in our stance, we'll lunge way out here, our head will go with it. Now I can't physically get my back leg to drive all the way through the ball. I can't get my knee under my hip and under my head, all right? So an athletic stance, whether you're open, closed, wherever you are, athletic stance, 
gain some ground forward to a strong base athletic position outside of my shoulders. That way our back knee can drive through, all right? All we're doing in this drill is again, creating consistency in our stance and in our stride, okay? We check, we check our swing when we start and when we stride out to make sure we're even with our cone. This is the opposite field mindset drill. All right, have the cones in the camera set up directly to left center for me, opposite field in the opposite field gap. If you're a right-handed hitter, simply line the cones up to right center field. All right, we're thinking opposite field gap when we hit, okay, or at the shortstop for me. For right-handed hitters, we're thinking line drive at the second baseman. Creates a lot of good habits, angle over the plate, good strong legs, and it keeps our head on the baseball, okay? So for this drill, you can simply have a tee here or you can front toss to your hitter have them try to return the ball directly over those cones, okay? Shooting the ball through the opposite field gap, all right? Now, if you have a ball player who's losing their barrel, they have a little bit of a loop in their swing, or they're consistently hitting the bottom of the baseball, you can space these cones out um, into zones. And what I like to do is put one, one cone right next to the pitcher's mound, um, directly in the line, right, to shortstop. One cone directly ne next to the pitcher's mound, one cone in the middle of the infield, so right in front of the shortstop for a left-handed hitter, and the last cone in the middle of the gap, all right? What you'll start to do is have them hit the first cone, which is close to them. Try to hit that cone with as many swings as you can, all right, to try to get them to be a little bit more direct to the baseball, keep the barrel above their hands a little bit longer. Then you can progress to the second cone. Have them try to hit the second cone. Finally, where we want them to hit the ball is the third cone. All right, then you can move to the third cone once we get some consistency, all right? What we don't wanna do is try to go for the third cone immediately, especially if the hitter has a little bit of a drop in their back shoulder or a loop in their swing. It'll only create a little bit more of a loop, all right? So trying to get them to stay over the baseball a little bit more, be a little bit more direct with the knob and keeping their barrel above their hands is why we aim for the first cone first, all right? So there's a couple variations of this opposite field mindset drill that I hope help. Thanks, guys.